Hello everyone, this is China Paradigm, where we, Dashi Consulting, interview seasoned entrepreneurs in China. Hello everyone, I'm Matthew David, the founder of Dashi Consulting Aids Podcast, China Paradigm, and today I'm, I'm with Carlotta Godio. You have been in China for 12 years, but you have been linked for China, with China for much longer time because you speak Chinese uh, if our research is good uh, yes. in your own country in Italy. Um, yes. You are the co-founder of uh, Flying Mind Video Production with your husband. Um, so for more than 12 years in China, for 15 years uh, in this business, and um, you have worked for um, famous companies like Cisco, Converse, BMW, McDonald's in China. Video is big. Everyone yes. has created his own videos of, with a phone. Everyone has published videos. That was not the case 20, 30 years ago. 20, yes. 30 years ago, <laughs> the people who had published videos would be very few people. Now everyone has done that. A few numbers. A few numbers about video uh, in, in China. And I'm pretty sure that the growth is similar in the world. It is said that in China, people on average would consume three to four hours of video, media and video content, digital media and video. And very often when you're on the digital um, assets, whatever digital media, usually at some point consume video. But what is very, very impressive is that among all the tools, which are social e-commerce, social CRM, CRM, sorry, corporate Weibo, uh, promotion with KOL, internet celebrities, the item which has grown the most between 17 and 18 is short video and live streaming. When I looked at those numbers and when I look at your business, I was asking myself, do you really benefit from the rise of short videos? Do you really benefit from the rise of live streaming because those videos are of average or quality or maybe uh, uncertain quality, not that much edited? So video is everywhere now, but maybe non-edited and uh, very amateur video. So that's a very, very interesting market. It's moving, it's moving fast, it's changing. There is a need for video and there is uh, a, a, a lot of videos online now. Thanks for being with us today. And Thank you for having me with you. You're welcome. And my first question is, could you describe a little bit about the, the size currently of your business in terms of number of clients, number of production, uh, and what you do? So yes, um, we are a, a video production agency, uh, as you said, uh, in China uh, since already 2008. And um, we uh, started two people with a, a very basic uh, a set of uh, video equipment, uh, like a laptop and a handy camera. So since uh, um, that remote time where, uh, as you said, uh, video in China was uh, still uh, something pretty new to many companies, we have been uh, grow growing um, slowly but constantly. And uh, now we are totally 15 people. We have our headquarters in Italy and uh, Shanghai is the um, branch. branch. Um, that um, is now formed by eight people. <clears throat> so we are not, uh, still not uh, the uh, very big uh, agency like, uh, I don't know, Chinese uh, typical uh, communications company where you have 50 or 70 employees. We still uh, uh, decided to to remain a um, boutique agency that can uh, uh, follow the client very closely and uh, carefully to be able to give the best uh, uh, result uh, on the product they are requiring. Um, we uh, work uh, uh, on video at uh, 360 degrees. That means that, uh, of course, we focus only on video. They ask us for uh, photos, uh, for uh, 
uh, design, but uh, we, we don't do that. We decided to focus on videos, but still uh, uh, focusing on video, uh, we have a big, big range of uh, industries we work with and uh, uh, kind of videos. As you said, uh, nowadays video can be used for so many uh, reasons, for so many goals uh, in a company, for uh, um, external communication, uh, internal communication and uh, so on. So during uh, these years uh, we have been working for, uh, uh, as you mentioned already, very corporate companies and brands like uh, Cisco, like uh, we have a couple of big names uh, in the chemical and pharmaceutical uh, field like Bayer and uh, Solvay and DSM. And uh, then we work on fashion. We have been shooting the social uh, media campaign on the latest uh, Prada fashion show that was uh, done in Shanghai, for example. So you can uh, uh, easily realize how various is our range of clients. And this is uh, what we decided to do, not to focus only on fashion, not to focus only on uh, uh, industrial video. We like uh, to, um, to change and to be the most creative uh, we can. So uh, that's us. I see. Uh, <coughs> I, see. I, understand, um, I understand what you offer to your clients, what I, I like to understand better is how you interact with them, because what I see is that you have a wide range of, of, of sectors you are working with. So as you yes. said, chemicals, fashion, let's say it's, it, it's difficult to find more different than chemicals and fashion. So very different industries. I believe that the pattern you have between the different clients is the way you interact with them, the way you try to understand them. Could you describe a typical project from the day they contact you with an ID or or even an IFQ, something precise or unprecise, what are the different steps you go uh, along with them? Is there a script you write with them? Is there um, um, a, f a first version of the video and, and then second version, different versions? How do you, what's a typical uh, way of working with you? So the process starts, of course, with the very first meeting when we will know each other and where the client uh, usually already comes with an idea himself, uh, but not always, always actually. actually. <laughs> we sometimes uh, have uh, meetings so uh, where, where the, the client, client maybe has some uh, budget left, I see. and uh, they uh, know for sure they want a video, but uh, uh, it can happen that uh, they are not really sure about uh, uh, what kind of video and uh, what's the scope of the video. So um, the first phase of this, um, let's call it relationship, we will start with the client is the most important for us because uh, First of all, we need to understand very clearly what uh, is uh, in our client minds. If they don't know exactly, we usually provide to them a very detailed uh, creative questionnaire with a lot, a lot of questions like uh, uh, what's your audience? Uh, where do you want to? Where where are you planning to stream uh, your uh, video later? And uh, what's exactly the message you want to give with this video? Uh, is the video gonna be B two B or B two C? Of course, uh, and um, uh, like many other questions, uh, for example. Uh, uh, what do you think is uh, the um, highlight uh, that you can provide to your client and that your competitors don't have uh, and uh, so on, so I many see. questions. And then uh, the second step uh, will be for us uh, to start uh, studying first uh, our client and second also the competitors that are in the market to understand a little bit the direction of their uh, 
um, communication style and uh, yeah and to see what they have been doing uh, until that moment so uh, this uh, is actually um, something that will require always uh, every time uh, quite some time for us uh, you know because as you as you said uh, if you work always in the same field uh, you study the competitors once uh, and then you will know everything about uh, that field but uh, changing a lot uh, we always uh, need to update uh, ourselves uh, on that uh, particular field then uh, the pre-production is uh, fundamental for our business uh, we spend uh, and uh, we try to spend uh, the longest uh, period of time on the pre-production is very very important that uh, everybody is aligned on the message we have to deliver uh, especially because uh, you have uh, many people working together on the same project so everybody needs to be very um, um, very well uh, um, briefed about uh, what's going on um, we uh, go further with uh, uh, writing the first uh, storyline that mm -hmm. is still not uh, um, a storyboard that is going to be the next step and it will be even more uh, detailed but first of all um, we give the storyline because most of the time if the client doesn't have an idea in mind we will uh, be able to provide a few options so you write down it will be only text and you will write down uh, a little bit the story telling that you are gonna um, develop uh, if the client will like it and uh, it will be another meeting I mean we will have a few meeting before it's uh, it's quite uh, also so, mm, funny, funny because, because uh, especially with uh, very Chinese uh, companies uh, most of the time uh, they are providing us uh, the timeline and uh, they want us uh, to go on with the pre-production in like three days and then they give us uh, one month uh, for the editing and the post-production for example and it's always uh, difficult we struggle a lot uh, in uh, trying to let them understanding that uh, it's actually the opposite what we usually need to have okay interesting and um, yeah and um, it's also quite difficult uh, okay you will have the storyboard with uh, images and text and uh, text describing what it will be the moving I mean the animated video because of course you have the images but they are pictures or they are hand drawings is not something that moves already um, so you will have also the text describing what's going on and if uh, uh, the voiceover is required we also start at this point to write down the the voiceover or sometimes can be the client providing the voiceover and then we will construct the story according to the voice the meaning of of the voiceover of course so, so we, we will have, have a few meetings meeting before, before we will be ready um, to um, to start with the the shooting and uh, when the shooting will really happen usually everything is already very well uh, decided very well uh, prepared um, you need to think about production so where uh, uh, many outfits are required some models so you will have uh, um, them uh, to do the um, the fit and uh, to study some uh, of the of the voiceover they will uh, need to uh, to speak about and uh, so uh, usually uh, during the shooting day 
uh, not so many problem will um, come out <laughs> and uh, it's uh, the funniest time of uh, each project because everything goes uh, usually very smooth and uh, we have fun and uh, there is a lot of energy uh, with uh, the crew, with the client and models or actors so um, it's something very um, fascinating and uh, yeah um, then after the shooting uh, there is the post-production phase mm -hmm. as I was mentioned before that uh, will uh, um, start with the editing of the of what we call it the first cut that is uh, uh, of course a very rough um, uh, editing of the video to select uh, what, uh, in our opinion, are the, the best, best uh, shot. And uh, we first give to the client to see if uh, they like uh, our selection. So st still you have uh, another uh, time of interacting and uh, communicate uh, with the client. Uh, we of course uh, cannot uh, give uh, like uh, have the first brief and give the video finished because uh, it's really difficult uh, to understand uh, the images uh, that uh, are already in mind uh, uh, in the in the client mind so that's why we spend so much time in that and uh, it happened that uh, you will need uh, to go on with uh, two, three, four, ten <laughs> round of modifications. And this it happened uh, sometimes mostly because uh, in the Chinese com big company structure, there are a lot of different uh, levels of uh, people and everyone want to say his own opinion and they do not collect all the feedback together so you need to be very patient <laughs> because uh, every time you do a modification on a video is not like uh, photoshop that uh, in three seconds is done no you need uh, uh, a lot of uh, computer renders and uh, quite long time especially if we are talking about uh, 2 and 3D animation that I didn't mention before, but that is also a very core uh, business in our company. We work a lot uh, with, the, with the motion graphic part. And uh, uh, for this part, it's even more difficult to imagine or to make people imagining what will be the final product. So in this case, uh, we also provide an animatic that is... Uh, to show the timing, so it's not something still, it's not the, the still um, storyboard, but it's already a kind of animation, but not the final one, where you can also have a check on the timing and all the images that uh, we will uh, move later. I see. You have already spotted some differences between uh, China and the West. So one of the differences be be between China and the West, at least with the Chinese clients, uh, is that they feel that the creative part, the part of um, thinking about what to do, should be short. But the, f the, the part which is to actually producing producing the video should be long. That's one of the difference you assessed. The other difference you assessed is that the number of checks, the number of validation in, in a state-owned enterprise, maybe, or big Chinese company, is going to, to be much longer than with uh, the interaction you have with international companies where they would gather and get the feedback internally. Would you have other differences you, you are assessing between China and the West? I'm thinking not only in terms of client relationship, but also the use of video. And my understanding is that video, um, YouTube cannot be compared to Yoku. Yoku cannot be compared to YouTube exactly. WeChat cannot be compared with Facebook because the, the, the video on WeChat is much smaller. You, you have a smaller, smaller screen, the moments and so on is different. Mm -hmm. So I believe the use of videos um, is slightly or even uh, very, usually different between uh, China and the West. What, what, what's your feedback uh, with China, between Chinese clients and uh, international clients? 
So another big difference, I go a bit uh, before sure. this um, topic, another big difference that um, uh, I noticed for so many years is that, uh, for example, in China, they will uh, um, select uh, you as a, as a video vendor only or uh, mostly if you have already done the most similar video production uh, compared to what they are requiring. If, uh, for example, uh, to give you names, if I can, uh, sure. we have been working for Stella Luna, who is a um, leather shoes, uh, high quality shoes design company. And um, after like few months, uh, another brand that is called Dissona, that is uh, a leather bags company, uh, saw the video and uh, they wanted exactly the same uh, video style, so they didn't even uh, consider to uh, call other companies or uh, asking for a pitch or something. In uh, Western world, I, or at least uh, for what I know in Europe and mostly in Italy, it's exactly the opposite. That means, uh, uh, especially uh, if you work with the fashion uh, brands, they don't want uh, to um, have the vendor who knows uh, about you and also about your competitors. Okay, let me understand better. <laughs> uh, is it because you think of confidentiality and they would like to stick with one agency or is it because they believe uh, you, you, we have to differentiate and it needs to be very creative? And finally, the question is international brands, uh, foreign brands or companies, how do they select you then? Because there are many other companies which have not worked with uh, Stel Stella Nena and other brands and you can find many others, but how would they would select uh, an agency not only based on the fact that she, she has it has not worked with uh, competitors is it on the creative brief is it on um, the relationship purely is it what are the criteria I understand for Chinese it's mainly because you have the most relevant experience really the, the similar case oh uh, yeah what for Chinese I think it's because uh, um, it's uh, I mean they are still not so uh, used to this, uh, I mean, to, to the video production, and then uh, they are more secure, they feel more secure. Mm. They already have uh, and tell you what they want, and uh, they know you can provide the same quality. For Italians, it can be actually, I, I, I'm not sure about this, uh, this, but uh, I guess uh, it's uh, because uh, they don't trust. Uh, the um, the fact that uh, you will uh, tell to uh, a competitor about some numbers or about some let's say secret uh, or also can be a little bit about uh, the creative uh, side of the business mm. that uh, they feel uh, uh, maybe you will work uh, with their competitors brand and uh, you will do something very similar and they want of course to be unique in their uh, yeah. video video creation video content so it can be both i guess i see yeah, that's what's happening with big agencies. <coughs> Publicists will not work with the clients of Omnicom, and uh, they have to split uh, if, if they don't can work with competitors. So it's pretty pretty common in the West, indeed. About the and use, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, going back to your previous question, I think the big difference can be uh, both the quantity and the quality of the video productions uh, in the in China uh, compared to Europe, let's say. Um, you can see a lot of uh, videos also on Taobao, for example. Sure. Let's uh, let's keep the the lowers. You know, the 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 bigger range will be the Taobao video where you have maybe I don't know the cousin or the brother of the uh, shop uh, owner or the um, factory owner 
taking a video of the sister <laughs> modeling with uh, like uh, you know the shirt uh, or uh, trousers or whatever and they do the video with by mobile phone and they will uh, upload it immediately with even knowing about post production for example so you have a really huge quantity of uh, video yeah, uh, going, going, going for, online. Yeah, for people who, who may not live in China, uh, Taobao, most people uh, sorry, now yes. know, know that it's a marketplace. But what pe people may not know is because Amazon is not built this way, uh, is that it's not only about pictures. You don't only see pictures when you buy a product on Taobao. You very often see a video which is showing you the product um, in, from different faces and how to use it and how solid it is, how resistant it is if, it's, if, if, if they think that you buy the product because it's resistant. So it, it very often you will see videos of product on Taobao. Mm. And um, yeah, and this doesn't happen, for example, uh, in, in Europe, where even if uh, you are uh, uh, working on a very low budget video, still the quality is going to be a, li a little bit more professional. I see. Uh, yes. Uh, so this is the main uh, difference, I guess. And uh, for us, um, looking back to all our uh, working years and experience we got, uh, we went through the very beginning of our uh, uh, agency um, life where many brands uh, didn't use videos, they didn't even consider it. Uh, they. Of course, uh, photos were the most, uh, the biggest uh, part of their uh, uh, campaigns or uh, promotional uh, campaign. And then uh, a video started to be more known, more used and more needed. And uh, it was a very good time for us because... Um, You're talking about China? Or yeah, yeah, speaking? sorry, yeah. sorry. Uh, because actually, uh, I'm much more in the Chinese market. I, yeah. I don't follow so much the, the Italian part. So yeah. uh, I'm more uh, related to what is happening in China. So what the clients are asking for, uh, for which use? Is it, uh, we understand that Taobao is not the right segment because it's usually poor quality no. videos. Uh, what do they do with the videos? Um, they can put on TV, but uh, it's it maybe for very, very big campaigns, so a bit more rare. Yeah. Uh, it could be for corporate video inside to, to sh display at the entrance of the corporate offices. Uh, but is it for special uses like Yoku? WeChat, which are very China specific, or live streaming, or or sales on different platform. Well, recently, since uh, you have this big need of uh, content for any kind of uh, um, social media, when we plan a shooting, we always uh, uh, try and uh, help the client not to focus only on the one format video but uh, we try to um, uh, create uh, much more content to be used uh, almost everywhere. You will have, uh, for example, um, the vertical format for the Instagram stories. Uh, of course, the first, uh, the, the most common is the um, 16 by 9 format that you can use wherever you want, uh, like uh, Facebook uh, or uh, Yuku or uh, uh, Vimeo, uh, both uh, uh, Chinese or Western social media can be fine for this format. But uh, we like uh, to collect, uh, as I was mentioning, like the one by one format that is the Instagram and then the vertical one that is for uh, Instagram stories. So the same video will be edited in a few different format to adjust to each single social uh, media uh, social um, media, media platform. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I see. Very and, interesting. Uh, 
and then uh, we also try to collect uh, like uh, for example we love uh, to provide the um, behind the scene or a backstage video for our clients because this is still some content that people want to see, want to watch, want to be part of uh, the, the process. Okay, so and some pictures, of course, uh, and uh, maybe some uh, GIF. Uh, so we try to sell a package that is not only one video for one social media and um, another difference is of course that uh, nowadays uh, video is uh, a must for any brand and uh, any company and um, since uh, um, all these channels have a huge appetite for content then you need to find the way even if you don't have big big budgets and you don't have like super bowl budget videos uh, money uh, you still must find a way to uh, make some videos so our productions uh, uh, goes uh, from the not the cell phone but uh, very like, like uh, um, handicam yes yeah. and uh, arrive to the very big uh, production where you are like 10 15 uh, people from the crew and you have like uh, i don't know 10000 renminbi cameras or even 10000 uh, dollars cameras <laughs> so it's uh, so the, the range, range uh, the, the the cost of the video production can goes really uh, like in a big uh, range according to the the expectation uh, if uh, for example we try to work uh, a lot not we try but some clients uh, re are requiring now some uh, case studies I mean they need to find content so case studies are um, the interview that we will uh, go to re to record to their client where the client I will see. Uh, will um, tell about what is good of this prod product and why they like it and uh, what is the benefit uh, in, in the company now, etc. So yeah, you you need to uh, create the most uh, possible to be uh, able to place it uh, all around. It's very interesting, and I, I feel that this ability to plan this ability to leverage one content one 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 video into short videos gif yes. uh, 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 as you say backstage uh, videos mm. is actually uh, something which is indeed requiring planning requiring a professional uh, uh, um, uh, thinking and th that's that I feel certainly something that your clients may be impressed by or very attracted by when you talk about this on your website, uh, there are many things you, you are mentioning. And I like to go through a couple of things because I don't know if it's mainstream or just the beginning of, of a new segment. You talk about 3D animation. You talk about uh, aerial videography, meaning with, with, a, uh, with a drone, I believe. Yes. Um, you, you're talking about also documentaries and video art those four segments for me were a bit new uh, to china including documentaries because we are not in a country where documentaries can be so easily shot so easily broadcast uh you st we are still in a country where there is censorship um mm -hmm. documentaries on the other hand and that's something i saw with sk2 SK2 ran a documentary about those women uh, who are said the, the, the so-called leftover women who are very professional in their life and so on, but are not married, not yet having kids and so on. And they did a documentary on it. And actually, the, 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 the entities which are doing documentaries are companies in China and less mm -hmm. media, less independent producers. 
or maybe uh, state-owned could could be, but it's it's brand and state-owned enterprise. Will you mind sharing a bit more about what you do in terms of documentaries, aerial videography, video art, and two D two D three D animations, uh, which seem a bit new to me? Okay, so for uh, talking about documentaries, um, we never had uh, experience about it happened sometimes uh, that uh, we came through uh, the guardian like the bawan i don't know in uh, in english mm. uh, um, telling us uh, to stop the the shooting i don't know if you were talking about this right uh, what we usually do because uh, in terms of asking um the the permission to shoot it will take uh, many months uh, and also most of the time you won't have the permission so what we do is uh, to use a kind of spy uh, equipment that is uh, gonna be very small and uh, used by a crew of max uh, two or three people so you don't uh, uh, show too much because nowadays a lot of uh, uh, like uh, privates they already use uh, like photo cameras that are already quite professional so the 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 people around want to see the difference between uh, a private uh, person shooting for their own interest and uh, as uh, that goes more uh, in in uh, you know in deep uh, to to shoot uh, documentaries and is it often and, asked to run the documentaries is it asked by companies in china is it asked by uh, state agencies is it asked uh, by foreign players is it a, a, a segment which is sizable actually we are not so specialized maybe and so it didn't happen so much that they ask us okay. uh, to shoot documentaries, but I have to say that is always uh, for me the most fascinating field because uh, you can uh, um, mix uh, uh, shooting and traveling. For example, we have been uh, doing a video recently for a Pepsi and uh, uh, we had to uh, travel uh, in Yunnan and it was of course uh, a lot of fun and it was amazing but uh, we it was uh, the content was not uh, sensitive and uh, and so i mean it's uh, it's not uh, a big uh, it was not a big deal in term of uh, problems uh, happening on field or uh, or something like this and um yeah that's I'm asking uh, a question because um i feel that in the west uh, companies are trying to explain more and more the business more and more how they they are let's say environmentally friendly how they are inclusive yes. and they build short documentaries about how they do good to society and my question was, uh, is, it a, is it a request you may have in China? Do you see something happening with documentaries in the same way as we see uh, in, in the West? Uh, yes. For example, for McDonald's, we have been shooting a documentary where we have been uh, showing the life of um, um, children's center of a left behind children's that M mcdonald uh, sponsorized i mean uh, they they um, th i don't remember if they bought some equipment for them or something so we have been uh, spending two days with these uh, kids at school uh, and uh, showing how they spend their uh, uh, normal uh, day life from morning to to evening and uh, and this is an example of what you were mentioning before, exactly. for example. I see. Yeah. Talking about uh, aerial videography um, with drones, um, yes. for the first time actually yesterday, I saw a drone in Shanghai. Uh, at the corner of our street, uh, very come on, surprising. But I, yeah, I, there are a lot. Uh, how, how there are a lot. You? In the street. <laughs> yes. In the street. Well, yes. It's regulated, it, isn't it? Also, 
also in the sky. <laughs> but it's regulated, it's, not at the level of a fifth floor, uh, floor, right? It's uh, regulated because the software you use to fly is very, very precise and can stop your drone on going on flying higher if you are, for example, close to the airport uh, area. But airport area doesn't mean like uh, 10. Mm, I don't know, 100 meters, but it means uh, kilometers, so it's, qu it's quite safe, I guess. So, you're using drones and even in the street in China to, to, yes. to shoot videos, it's, it, actually it's pretty open, pretty unregulated, and it's, you can be pretty creative. Much, much more open than uh, in Italy, for example, where, uh, where you need to have a patent. Here in China, you need to register yourself uh as uh, the owner of the drone that is uh, the plate number i don't know whatever so if uh, something bad uh, will happen uh i don't know you uh break a car <laughs> they, they will uh, know who was the the one uh, owning the the drone but uh it's it's quite uh, free still quite uh, quite okay Interesting. It, it, it's really the surprise of China, and I think we see that with every interview we do. Uh, China is seen from the West as a place where there are a lot of regulations, where there is censorship, where it's difficult to do things, to be creative. And actually what you are telling us is that you can pretty well use a drone in the city to shoot a movie whether I'm, I'm pretty sure you cannot do it in Paris or in New York. Uh, mm. I'm pretty sure uh, you will be asked to, to, to put it down or you need to, uh, to, to ask the authorities for, for, for permit to do that. What, what, what are the, um, the, 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 the trend you see in the new formats? We talked about documentaries as potentially a new format. We talk about IR videography. We talk about 3D. Are we, is VR, for instance, virtual reality or AR, augmented reality, already something happening or is still something which is for the future? What, what do you see as new trends happening now and trends which are going to happen, especially with the, the, the advancement of 5G? So what do you see as currently the new formats used mm. and the coming formats? Um, actually, we don't deal with the VR, so um, I know it's uh, uh, a big trend at the moment in China because, of course, uh, uh, everything changes, everything evolves, and uh, each brand always try to impress the most. So there was the time a few years ago where uh, we made a lot of uh, video mappings, for example, that is the kind of uh, like uh, maybe, you know, the projection on building facades. Oh, you did that? We, we we work with uh, yeah we we can uh, we can do also that and uh, yeah for example we did it for Oppo during the um, a new model um, um, phone yes uh, a new model phone uh, and um, after video mapping now the, the the brands are struggling to to surprise their. Uh, their audience, so yes, uh, VR is gonna also because uh, of the experience uh, you can give uh, uh, through the VR uh, production. Um, so for sure uh, is uh, is what is uh, is going very well. But uh, as I mentioned, we don't uh, we don't do it. So okay. I I cannot go in details okay. uh, on okay. on this. Uh, on this topic. Well, what are the next uh, changes you see in your industry? Uh, 5G may impact it because it may make uh, the use of videos even easier, faster to download, to stream. Uh, do you see um, new trends coming on? Production mapping, actually, you mentioned in your website. I didn't understand well, this way. Well, in China, if you use Chinese platforms, yeah. if you use WeChat, if you use Yuku, actually, uh, speed is already not 
a so big problem in my opinion and uh, also um, uh, I guess uh, uh, what is gonna happen in the future is uh, that uh, each single video will be shorter and shorter because uh, people doesn't is not patient enough you know you want to see a lot of videos you don't want to spend 10 minutes or five minutes on a video maybe what's the best format maybe your mother <laughs> yeah. but what, what's the best what's the best time then from your experience is it in 10 seconds is it 20 seconds what what if you want to of to course it depends it yeah. depends on the message, on it depends on the social platform you want to stick it but uh um, for example, we do a lot of uh, events video as well, or uh, company introductions video. And of company introduction video cannot be 20 seconds because you don't have the time to even to start talking about the company. But we always uh, uh, suggest uh, to stick into the two minutes. That is the max. Uh, somebody can give your attention. You can imagine you you watch uh, you open a website of a company you are interested in. Okay, you have a video. How much time you will give to that video? Yeah. Or for example, you are visiting an exhibition and you have uh, hundreds or thousands of uh, um, booths with a huge uh, LED screens uh, projecting the introduction video of their companies. So you walk around and uh, maybe you stop uh, half a minute. You don't need to watch all of the video, but uh, still uh, it gives you an impression that will uh, stay in yourself uh, and uh, the video, uh, this is something also we, we, we struggle with uh, most of the time in China is that uh, uh, since uh, uh, the client uh, decided to do a video and uh, usually I mean you have to spend quite a, a few money on that uh, they always try to stick the most of the content uh, they can in inside the same video so they oh, ask okay. for a five six uh, or uh, eight uh, minutes video thinking that uh, is going to be the best for them to have uh, everything there. But uh, this is not correct because uh, it's not the time that you dedicate to a video. Uh, the video need to uh, let you with a positive impression with like, uh, wow, beautiful uh, or uh, wow, very high tech company or wow, very lifestyle product, whatever. And then if you really are interested in that product or in that uh, brand, you will search online and uh, you, you will uh, read much more precise this information, for example, on the website or uh, anywhere on, on web. Do you do some tests? Are you asked to do some tests on the video to see how, how people react? Um, it's my, my research background, the constant background, which is coming back here. But do you, are you asked by your, sometimes your clients after a first version of the production to do some tests with, with a potential audience? Yes, we do it with uh, also actually a bit earlier with the storyboard. Already? Yes, because of course uh, after the shooting if you realize that something is not clear or uh, something didn't work well uh, is already quite late in terms of uh, like money and uh, organization of the time to go back and change. So usually we do it a bit uh, earlier to be sure during the shooting that uh, everything is already decided and uh, that it will work. I see, I see. Last uh, questions we have at the end uh, of every interview about China and uh, you, um, you, yourself in China. What, what kind of resources uh, do you read, do you watch, actually maybe you watch as well some, <laughs> some elements on China to stay up to date? So, um, uh, I read, uh, 
Okay, I read uh, Jean Daly is my my favorite and uh, is mostly because it's related to I think you know it to fashion and design yeah. and brands and also it's not really focused on China world but I also like a lot uh, Ad Week that is uh, a website and uh, it will come with the newsletter also related to media and uh, advertising and technology and uh, um, then uh, um, related to videos i like nowness uh, the, virtual the videos yes yes oh, sorry what did you say but it's short videos right about yes, a specific yes. topic yes, news, so and, news most of the time is a video channel um, focusing on arts and uh, culture okay. and yeah um, fashion beauty and so on is very like general but they have a very high level and uh, nice creative videos uh, there then uh, the the boring one is a uh, shanghai business review that i have the newsletter but yeah i i check it uh, sometimes then shanghai east uh, a lot of uh, yeah these uh, like uh, China Daily and and so on. What what are, what books would you suggest for someone to read about China? Oh, about China. Um, about China, I suggest uh, a book that is not business related, if you sure. don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> and it's called. It's still my favorite book. I don't read so many books about uh, Chinese business or uh, stuff like that, but. Uh, uh, I suggest uh, the book called The Living Mother Lake that is uh, written by Arch, uh, Arch Namu, the name of the lady. And uh, so this is part of my background because as you mentioned before, I studied the Chinese culture at the university and um, I wrote my thesis uh, about this uh, um, minority that is a matrilineal society living uh, uh, south uh, of um, of Tibet, just to give you uh, an idea. And uh, um, this book, it's the story of this girl that is originally from this uh, uh, place who uh, became a famous singer and so she uh, the book is about her life uh, about uh, her world that is very um, different very particular and uh, and then uh, all the story uh, of how she uh, first uh, went uh, to sing and to study in the bigger cities of China and then finally to uh, Sweden or Switzerland, I don't remember very well. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a... Uh, okay. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> I said too much. Sorry. No, no, no. no. I, thought, I thought it was the end. But thank you very much no, for sharing the okay. novel. Most of the people we, we ask for, for books is, is more about business books. But actually, I strongly believe you learn more about the country through the novels than through the business books. I really like the culture. Yeah. Uh, what I love of China is the cultural side of, uh, and not even uh, of the big cities, but like the remote areas. So, yeah. I see. Yeah, it's a, a bit different book. <laughs> Something we would we wouldn't talk about business, and you won't see them in business business books and uh, in newspapers. Um, two questions about China. Two more questions. Um, Peter Drucker, the the, the uh, thinker of business and strategy with business, said, in order to understand innovation, in order to foresee innovation, what's going uh, to happen in the future, you need to see of the failures current failures or current success you were not expecting. I'll give you an example. I was not expecting that, um, let's say, Google would leave or Uber would leave China or Amazon would leave China, basically, would fail. And at the opposite, I wouldn't um, expect that people would spend so much time on doing TikTok, uh, sharing videos, which for me uh, seem a bit meaningless and a waste of time. But that's mm -hmm. happening. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think that shows uh, some of the innovation for the future. What, what have you witnessed in terms of success 
in China, could be an industry, could be a company, could be uh, so for society, whatever, that you think were very surprising and unexpected, a failure and a success. But you mean uh, related to not the to mind you, to, to your observation, to your observation. What have you observed in China, which has been successful, and you were very surprised how successful it could have been? Um, of course, for instance, some people are surprised with WeChat payment, for instance, how digital payment can be big in China. That's a very big surprise. I, okay, yeah. I, I, I got it. <laughs> I'm amazed about the level, uh, so maybe something not so important, but uh, it's more like um, design oriented or uh, be beauty oriented. Sure. I'm amazed about uh, how good... Uh, uh taste uh, is uh, uh has been developed between uh, uh younger chinese uh, uh communities before i remember many years ago uh nobody uh, had uh, any logic or any taste uh, in uh, dressing like they were mixing a lot of uh, different uh, i don't know styles colors uh, but not in, not in a nice way i i was always surprised because uh, at the end uh, you could check the label they were very uh, big uh, brands uh, and expensive clothes uh, but uh, putting together they didn't give you the idea of uh, be elegant or be trendy or stuff and now uh, I think they are the best in the world because they keep uh, this freedom of not following uh, for example I don't know in Italy you have a lot of very small cities where people always follow the same uh, trend the same fashion today I don't know sorry not today but this year the color is green and you go around and everybody is dressed in green here they mix uh, chinese they mix korean they mix japanese they mix uh, european styles uh, and they are very beautiful and elegant uh, and uh, each one is very personal yeah, so i, lo I, feel I love the same. it I feel I the same, it. generally speaking, about design. A lot of people, mm -hmm. like uh, when I arrived in China, 10 years ago, were saying that China is not a country for design. It's not a country for creativity. It's a mm -hmm. country for production. But the fact yes. is, I see much yes. more creativity in, in Shanghai than in Paris. Mm. The coffee shops, the streets, the, the shops, the retail. Uh, art the, galleries. Art galleries. Or, uh, yeah. Everything actually is as creative, even more creative and sophisticated as yes. a city like Paris, which is yes. said to be a very creative Absolutely. city. Absolutely, yes. Same, same. Uh, if I compare Shanghai with the Italy now, I feel the same. True. Yeah. Thank you very much for your Thank time. Thank you. I uh, hope... Uh, uh, I was not too boring, so... <laughs> a very interesting, very interesting talk uh, as, as about the, the format of video, because mm. I think there are a couple of things you, you said, which is leveraging one video into different formats, uh, which is a different use of, of video, like documentaries used by companies mm. that you use for McDonald's. It, it's certainly showing as a road for a, 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 yeah. a, a new type of media and I think it's going to, to grow bigger and bigger especially when we think about 5G and how connected our world is going to be thank you very much again I You're hope welcome. you enjoyed I hope everyone enjoyed as well <laughs> to listen to us and um, talk soon <laughs>